There we go. Okay. So, um, uh, let's start by looking at the graph of just easy x. The graph of easy x looks something like this. It um, is basically zero for, I mean, it's not actually, it's not on zero technically, it's an asymptote. So we have a, a, a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to zero, but it's basically hugging the asymptote so closely you can't even tell the difference until it gets to um, uh, right here and it goes to the point zero comma one. And then it really starts shooting off. So it goes to the point, um, uh, like it goes to the point like two comma, it's not exactly seven, but it's, a, it's an ugly decimal again, but it's, you can call it about two seven and, and then it goes through, I think like 320 and it really shoots off from there. So um, that's the graph of EVX. And I mentioned this when we when we were talking about transformations, but really there's only one exponential graph. Every exponential graph in the whole world is just a transformation of this one. That's one of these things that really give transformations its power. So I think it's worth thinking about transformations of e the x. Uh, for example, like this. Gonna change this slightly, I think, for example. Okay. Y is equal to 4e to the 0.1x plus 5. So this is a transformation of dx. And you'll recognize this as your a value. You'll recognize this as your b value, and you'll recognize this as the k value, which is outside the function. You might also recognize there's no h. And I kind of want to keep it that way. So it turns out you don't really need h even to get any exponential function. Um, and the reason is, is suppose I had uh, like 2.3e to the x plus 2. So, so this is just, a, you don't have to take notes on this. This is just a quick aside. But if you did have an h value and you wanted to get rid of it, you could. You could just do it this way. So this is the same thing as 2.3 times. Well, addition, that was one of our rules, right? It becomes multiplication on the outside. So this is e squared times e to the x. And e squared is just some constant. So I could just call this my new a, basically. My new a would be, um, uh, what that is, 2.3 times e squared is, well, it's about 17. Actually, it's really close to 17. So I just get basically a new a value, but I, I can get rid of my h. So it's really no, no reason to have h. Um, not that I have anything against h. I, I love h too. I love all my variables, but uh, it's just not the time for h right now. So uh, anyway, so, so how do we graph this? Well, we could just apply the transformations. You know how to do transformations. You could do a tr transformation to get there. But um, let me give you uh, maybe kind of a quicker way to do it. Um, and it starts with K. So here's my, here's my graph. So we're going to start with K. And you can think of this, well, it moves up the whole graph, but in particular, this moves up the horizontal asymptote. To whatever value it is, basically, to, to the k value. So right off the bat, 
I can draw in my horizontal asymptote. So we started at zero, but it moves up five. So that's where it's going to be. H A as uh, Y plus great. Okay. So uh, next, let's let's move on to the A value. What is this A value really doing? Well, of course, it stretches the whole graph by a factor of four. But in particular, the way I kind of want to think about it is, it's going to. So let me get a different color. In particular, it's going to take this, this distance right here, which is one, uh, um, uh, so I'm talking about this is the distance between the HA and the, the y-intercept. Basically, it's the y-intercept minus the HA. It's going to take this one value, which starts out at one, and it's going to stretch that to, to you know, whatever A is. So this um, basically moves the, the y int to A units above the um, horizontal asymptote. So in this case, if this is a four, I'm going to go up four units, and I'm going to end up right here at nine. That's going to be my y-intercept. And uh, that leaves B, basically. What is B doing? Well, for this, I think it's a little bit less clear what B is doing. I mean, we know it's 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 gonna um, you know it's it's going to uh, again you can use transformations to do this without a calculator. So uh, but um, what I find is actually most helpful is to just to plug in one other point. <laughs> Just to get a sense for how quickly this is growing, basically. So B, B is really the growth rate. This is the growth rate of the exponential function. So if I just plug in some other value, I find that that is that's what's going to kind of help me. Um, kind of get a sense for how, how quickly this is growing. So let me just plug in. Uh, you know, and it, it you know, I should have thought about this maybe a little bit more. Um, basically, you have to kind of estimate based on what B is, what you want to plug in for X. Uh, I'm just going to plug in, um, for point one, I'm just going to plug in X equals five. So if I plug in x equals five, I get. Yeah, let me do that real fast. Or e to the zero point one times times yeah. Let's put parentheses look up here. Uh, times uh, five um, plus five, I get about 12, right, sorry, 11.6. Uh, I get 11.6, so that's another point um, on my graph. Right about here. And so this basically is going to tell me what my graph looks like. So let me, and this is getting a little bit busy. Let me let me do this in orange to maybe make it stand out. Here's what the graph is going to look like. I'm going to start on my asymptote in this case, go up through this point, up through this point, and this kind of make a nice smooth curve. Um, 
And there you go. There's the graph. Um, so uh, hopefully, hopefully we can maybe do another example of this before the end of today. But uh, let me also show you the reverse process. So sometimes we have the graph and we want to figure out what the formula is. We've done problems like that with transformations before, right? So uh, let's, let's do an example like that. And you'll see we're just going to reverse this process. Uh, I actually have an example right here. Um, so we want to find this graph. I'm oh, sorry, find the formula. It's easy to find the graph. It's right there. We're done. No, it's, we want to find the formula for the graph. So how do we do this? Well, we want to go through that same process that we just went through, uh, just kind of uh, reversing each step. And I would start by finding k. So we're going to find k. This is, if you remember, k was basically where the horizontal asymptote moved to. So if you can identify the horizontal asymptote, I'm guessing it right here. That's going to tell you k. And in this case, it's going to be k is equal to, it looks like it's about 8. OK. Next step. That's pretty, pretty quick. Uh, next step is going to be to find a. So A, if you remember, was basically this distance between the y-intercept and the horizontal asymptote. And that's basically exactly what it is over here, too. So it's this distance right here. Um, so it's basically the y-int minus the ha, if uh, you understand that notation. Um, it's this distance right here, which is 3. So A is going to be equal to 3. Great. We're doing great. Um, the problem to L, though, is to find B. Because um, those are kind of easy to pick off the graphs, but B is, is not so easy. So what I'd recommend for this is just to use another point. and solve for B. So, uh, okay, so what, what, what would that be? Well, um, let's, uh, you know, it doesn't, the graph is, doesn't really perfectly go through any points. Um, you might be tempted to maybe use this point, and I think that would work. But I, I caution using a point too close to the horizontal asymptote because um, basically what's going on there is um, uh, you know we we've already we already know the horizontal asymptote so if we're picking a point close to the horizontal asymptote unless we're super precise we're not getting as much information as we could be. Because a lot of the information is just the horizontal asymptote, basically, plus a little bit. Um, so I would, I would, you know, I would not recommend using that point. I might come over here at this point. So, so it's away from the y-intercept. It's away from the horizontal asymptote. It is the point. Um, uh, so I kind of cut off. I kind of cut off the x-axis here, but I, I think it's it's going to be five comma. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's it's close enough. I think it'll give us an idea of what B is. So um, okay. So what so what do, what do we do to find B? Well, actually, let me, let me do a new page here. So our general form here that we're looking at is a e to the b x plus k. And at this point, we know a and b. So we now we know sorry a and k. We don't know b yet. 
we know that A is uh, 3, and we know that K is uh, 8. We know those ones. And now we also know a point. So now we can actually plug in an x, y. So we have the point 5, 16 lies on the curve. So we can actually plug those in as well. So we can, we can plug in 16 for y. Um, let me see my colors here. Uh, I can type in 5 for X. The last time all my colors this is being a little crazy. Uh, there you go. You can basically plug everything in, and uh, now you have one equation and just one unknown. Just the B is not known now. So from here we can kind of just solve for B, and and we should be good. So uh, let me do that. Let's uh, let's subtract eight from both sides. I get 8 is equal to 3e to the b times 5. I'll divide by 3. Let me come over here. Get um, 2.66 is equal to e to the b times 5. And at this point, I've actually isolated my e. So I can apply the natural log to both sides. I'm going to get, um, I, don't know, I don't know what this is. I might just, just leave it like this for now. Uh, but I know these cancel. The natural log and the E cancel. So we get B times 5, and we can just divide by 5. On both sides, we get the B is equal to the natural log of 2.66 over 5, which is. Uh, 1.95, I'm guessing, well, I actually don't have to guess because I'm the one who created the problem. I'm guessing, but, well, uh, you know, the person who created this problem probably chose 0.2, and I know that's actually what I did, so uh, we'll just round that to 0.2. And we have our B value, so finally, we have um, the, full, uh, the full formula, which is... Um, y is equal to 3e to the 0.2x plus 8. And there's my answer. Okay. I'm going to stop the recording.